Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Hello, everybody, and welcome to part four of Building and Detailing, the 1 to 3 50th scale Hobby Boss USS Alaska. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the cranes and the guns. To get the aircraft crane towers to fit better, remove the locating pins. Position the halves with thin strips of masking tape and then run beads of super glue along the seam lines. The kit's photo wets railings for the crane bases can be bent around the base. Mark the base's center and glue the straight section first. Then curve the railings around one side, glue it, and then curve the glue the other side. The right mid-level platform railing was formed around the platform and that didn't work well. On the left one, I bent the two 90 degree locations first, glued the railings in place, and then worked it around the curve. That worked better. The crane towers have been assembled. The mid-level platforms are a very tight fit, so scrape some of the plastic off the inside area so they'll slide down the towers. The top railing was shaped with a 3 inch, inch wood dowel. The photo wedge cranes are very delicate, so you're going to have to be super careful when you're working with them. The end plate on the cranes should be removed and formed separately. Bend the pulley plate up first. Next, bend the end plate frames into shape. The end plate that was cut off will slip over these once the frame is folded. Carefully bend the free frame end up first. This entire assembly, as I said, is very fragile, so be careful and go slow. Next, close up the frame by folding your way around it. And here again, go slow. The frame is now bent into shape and tiny drops of super glue were added to the attachment points. This is not a well-designed photo etch part and there are no aftermarket replacements, so be very careful with them. To add strength to the frame, I super glued lengths of 0.019 inch brass rods that are approximately 1 and 5 16 inches long to the inside corners of the frames. I also added tiny lengths of plastic to the inside areas of the end plates for gluing. The crane frame bases had holes for guide pins, but the kit does not supply them. I made them with 0 0.025 inch plastic rod and the frames snapped into place. I drilled a 0 0.020 inch hole through the end of the pulley assembly that attaches to the crane and I cut a tiny length of 0 0.019 inch brass rod which I used as a pin to secure the pulley assembly in place on the crane frame. The pulley assembly was then super glued into place. The end plates that were cut off were curved with a 0 0.046 inch drill bit. Note that the upper flat area of the curved plate is shorter than the lower flat plate area. The plates were white glued into place so they could be positioned properly and then drops of super glue were added. The top platforms had ugly seams that were impossible to fix, so I hid them with 0 .010 inch thick disc punched out with my trusty water and punch tool. The aircraft cranes are now complete. Adding the brass rods to the inside areas helps strengthen the crane frames and prevented them from bending or getting crushed while handling them. The 14-inch gun turrets had damaged bases that will need to be cut off. I used the tip of a number 11 X-Acto blade to carefully scribe the edges of the plastic. Several passes cut the plastic deep enough so that it could be snapped off. The edges of the turrets were then sanded smooth. The tree stubs that are attached to the upper lengths of the 12-inch barrels should be removed first leaving some excess on them. Then snip off the remaining stubs. 
Next, carefully and lightly scrape off any remaining stubs and then scrape off the seam lines around each barrel. One method to restore the shape of each barrel is to use a flexophile. Be sure to wet sand the barrels and use very fine grit sandpaper. Another method for restoring the shape of the barrels is to wrap wet sandpaper around each barrel and rotate the barrel around the inside of the sandpaper while slowly pulling the barrel away from the sandpaper. Each barrel length should then be polished with a very fine steel wool pad. The barrel tips were slightly indented, but I deepened them with a .036 inch drill bit. The barrels were checked with silver paint and then cleaned with a very fine steel wool pad to remove all of the paint. I cut the ends off the barrels so they could be positioned onto the frames with the top turret taped to the base and I used testers tube glue to attach them. I also elevated the barrels a bit higher, so the upper openings on the blast bags had to be made a little bit bigger. The main guns are now being test fitted. I also marked each base assembly with its corresponding turret as the barrels and blast bags were specific for each turret. The blast bags were glued in place first. The vertical ladders were added and then the turret's optical boxes were attached. The tops of the optical boxes needed some seam work. The vent piping and discs were added last. The openings in the ends of the blast bags will be filled with white glue once painted so that the bags wrap around each barrel. The life rafts and floater net baskets will be added after painting. The 5 inch twin turrets needed to be modified so that their appearance is more accurate. I used lengths of 0 0.02 by 0.125 inch strips to cover the back sides of the barrel openings. Then I added 0 0.08 by 0.125 blocks for the barrels. The barrel's ends were cut off and I made a gauge for setting each barrel at the same location on the turrets. The gauge had a 0 0.037 inch hole drilled into it for marking and each hole was also drilled using the same drill bit size. The vertical ladders were added and then the top and aft parts were added with testers tube glue. The barrels will be attached with white glue after painting and the faces where the barrels sit will be painted a brass color. The tree attachment points for the upper 40 mm bases needs to be cut and then the excess snipped off. Then scrape and wet sand smooth the stub attachment points. The tree stub attachment points on the lower 40 mm platforms are easier to remove and clean up. The tree attachment points for the 40 mm barrels need to be snipped first. Position the snippers as close to the barrel as possible and cut it. Then cut the stub attached to the base. The positioning holes in the 40 mm bases need to be slightly enlarged. I assembled the upper and lower 40 mm bases, then attached each assembly to masking tape to hold it steady while I glued the barrels. Be sure each set of barrels are straight and at the same elevation. Lastly, I added the photo etch railings. The kit's 20mm guns are not as good as the Tamiya Missouri 20mm gun which is on the right. The kit parts also do not have a mounting location for the photo etch splinter shields. I use a jig which I made for the Tamiya 20mm guns for the placement of the photo etch shields. This allows all the shields to be positioned at the same angle and it ensures that they will be straight. All the main sub-assemblies were test fitted prior to painting. The forward superstructure looks pretty good. Note the positioning of the 12 inch barrels. The center part of the superstructure looks pretty good too. 
The catapults and cranes are a bit off balance because of their shapes, so they will need to be attached with testers tube glue after they've been painted. The aft superstructure sub-assemblies look pretty good too, and everything fits. All of the parts for the stern area also fit well. I hope you enjoyed part four of building and detailing the USS Alaska. In part five, we're gonna start airbrushing the parts and I'm gonna show you how I do a measure 32 dazzle pattern. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!